What's up guys? I'm Shane. Welcome back to the first era of our relegation league. Alright guys, so we're here in the off season. I think I seemed a little too far ahead. I don't remember if we went over everything at the end of the last episode. I hope we did. So we're gonna take a look at who's leaving and everything like that. We didn't lose any coordinators, any, you know, we didn't get fired yet. So what I want to do is, I'm going to change up the format a little bit going forward. This is, it. it's supposed to feel a little different than the North Texas Dynasty and any other, like, regular dynasties we do. This is supposed to be sort of more rapid fire. So, we're going to have the offseason today. And then at the end of the episode, we're going to be playing our first game, which I'm thinking is going to be FCS. Uh, this, that's a good measuring stick for us since we lost to them last year. And I think from here on out, unless it's a really good game... This series is going to be exclusively double headers. Now that's going to mean a little bit more work for me, but I, I'm going to do a lot of simming. The one big thing too, I'm going to change it down to five minute quarters. Uh, North Texas, every other dynasty I do has seven. But we're going to go five minute quarters here, so the games will go a little bit quicker. Less for me to have to go through and play, less for me to have to edit. And hopefully it'll keep the episodes of being a half hour each time. But I think doing that, because I do want to go through and play a bunch of teams, and I don't want this series to drag... Because if I play out the full five years here with UMass, uh, we are we just finished year five with North Texas, and that has taken since the beginning of the channel back in August. So we'll never get through anything. So we're going to go double headers from here on out. Unless, like I said, it's a really close game where I have to show a lot of it. But I think basically what I'm going to do, if we're down by 14 points, I'll start super simming. And if we're up by 14, I'll start super simming. Depending on where in the game we are. Um, make it a little more challenging for me. I can't afford to fall behind all the time, but... This is supposed to be a little more challenging in a different way. All right, all that out of the way. Let's take a quick look at who's leaving. Nobody we really are too concerned about outside of Hawk here. He was a pretty good free safety for us. I think strong safety is always a like more of a strength for us on every team. That just seems to be my thing. So Fry is only a junior. He's got one more year, but Hawk still made a couple good plays for us. Robinson going out injured. That stinks, but he was very ineffective anyways. Hopefully, with some better offensive line play, we'll do better by the next running back. Very few positions seem to be settled. We've got that one defensive end. Hopefully, we can get the other one today. Hopefully, we've got our quarterback today. And outside of that, everything's kind of still a question mark. All right, transfer requests. Please? No one. Dang it. All right, so here's where my big decisions are. All right, so we're going to spread it out a bit here. Allen, I'm going to put 1,000 points into. It might be a little unnecessary. Appalachian State, probably won't go after him. I don't see anyone throwing a full 10,000 at him. Hopefully, 1,000 will be enough to keep anyone else away from him. I'm thinking maybe Appalachian State would throw like 5,000 at him or something like that, but hopefully the 1,000 is enough. Webb, I'm throwing 2230 because that will keep us 3,000 points up on South Carolina, and hopefully that's enough for them to not jump over us. Josh Freeman, 5,215. That'll put us exactly uh, five points ahead of them if they also offer 5,000. If they offer more than that, we're not going to get them anyways because they'll probably just max them out at that point. And Bridges, I'm going to throw the rest at. No one else here, the more I look at it, I'm really concerned about going after. Same thing, Jones, we got the lead. Maybe he'll just sign. Me, you know what? I'll offer five points to Ivy and five to Jones, and maybe because I threw something at him, they'll sign. Obviously, we already got one D-end. We got Drew Royal at quarterback. He's a junior, but it's a good backup option. We got a 69 overall center, so that's nice for us long term. We brought in Thornton, another junior, but 79 overall. He is way better than anyone else on our defense already. Wade's going to be a nice wide receiver for us. Johnson, I think, is going to play halfback for us. 89 speed, 92 excel, 88 carrying down there. 71. Like, none of the other stats are really, like, blow you away. And he's a pretty good receiver, too. But, I'll well, 67 ball carry vision. That might be good, but I, I don't know. I'll mess around with him. He could be another wide receiver for us, or he could be a halfback. Either way, he's going to be on our offense. Jackson, 65 overall tackle. That's great for us long term. And Victor Greer, 69, but we didn't actually fully scout him, so he could be anywhere from a 62 to a 75. I have no idea. All right, fingers crossed. Now, again, the D end is actually the only one I'm worried about. I almost threw the full 10,000 at him. But there's a chance Houston does that too, and then I won't get anyone. So we'll throw some points to the other guys. But really, the defensive end is the only great player that we're going after. Even the quarterback, 73 accuracy. Like, he's still going to be kind of terrible, and he won't see the field for a couple years. Well, we signed someone. 
We got the left end. We got the quarterback. We got the wide receiver. We got a strong safety, another wide receiver down here. Hey, you know what? Three out of four signed. Nebraska must have gone all in on his left tackle or right tackle. I'm not worried. 67 overall would have been an improvement, but not going to make or break us. Hey, we have the top class in the conference. I don't know how good of a class it was, but we got the top in the conference, so yay. We had the number 34 overall class. I just wanted to be like 75. We got 34. That's incredible. For year one, for a 4-8 and eight squad in the UMass? Come on. That's pretty good. All right, just went through and took care of some of the uh, position changes. There's going to be a lot of people getting released here. Moore is going to be starter this year, obviously. Royal B is back up. Allen's going to catch a red shirt. Oh, Royal's only a sophomore. Oh, shoot. I thought he was a, a junior. All right, we're going to have a good 1-2 tandem at quarterback, apparently, if no one transfers. I think they're both about to catch a red shirt this year, then. Matthew Johnson is the junior Juco. I put him over at halfback. 89 speed, 92 excel, but all of his running things, like the break tackle, all that kind of stink. But he's a good receiver, obviously. He could have played wide receiver, been slightly better, I think. We don't need him over there as a junior. So he's going to be the second string back. He's also going to be returning kicks for us. And Frazier, who we had redshirted last year, will be the starter. We're still going to need a long-term running back, but that'll work for right now. Wide receiver Wade, he's not going to be at the top of the depth chart for long, but he's only a freshman. He's not going to catch a red shirt. We're going to get him right in here. Uh, honestly, I might go a little out of order. And Montgomery, Fuller, and Rankin might be like three through five. And we'll put Wade and Barnes up on top. Webb down here is going to catch that red shirt. I'm not going to use him too much. This is not a long-term strategy. It's that everyone ahead of him is a senior. So we'll give him a red shirt because he's not going to play anyways. And hopefully that will stop him from transferring. Left end, we got Freeman. Again, from my experience, the left end is actually going to get more sacks, so I'd rather have the better overall guy there. And right end, we got Jesse Smith. At both positions, we have a redshirt freshman who's already on the roster. So if we pick up anyone at defensive end, it's a bonus, but we don't have to look for it. We are set for the next four years. D-tackle, Greer went all the way down to a 63. Like I said, bust because we didn't fully scout him. He's not going to be starting for us, and obviously D-tackle is going to be an area of concern. Linebackers are shuffled all around. Huff is still going to get the start. Probably have Matthews back him up over Oliver. Um, it, it's mostly because he's younger. Oliver's a senior. If I have to cut players, it's going to be the seniors who I know aren't going to get drafted anyways. So people like Oliver, Parham, like some of these guys who started for us last year, they might just be gone. Middle linebacker Thornton and Peterson are still going to be the starting two linebackers. Peterson's actually going to be the higher overall, but I'm going to be usering Thornton. So he'll probably get the start on top of the depth chart. Mosley, again, we had all these left outside linebackers. He's only got a 70 speed, though, so we're going to look to replace him, but he'll be there as the third string. Right outside linebacker, another one of the lefts. We got Skinner over here. He's going to go up over to 70. And again, High was starting for us last year at a 60. No big change at cornerback, other than we really need to recruit someone because they're all seniors. Free safety, Thomas, who I believe I had redshirted last year. He's going to be stepping in for Hawk. So we're going to technically be better overall, depending on his training results. And Fry is coming back for one last season. All right, we're going to need some real good training results here. And luckily, our team is garbage. So we should see a few uh, plus sevens, hopefully. Definitely a lot of plus sixes. I don't see any plus sevens so far. That's not good. All right, Moore gets a plus five. Frazier with a plus four. Morris with a plus five. Wide receiver Fuller with a plus five. Montgomery a plus four. Rankin a plus four. Mason with a plus five. We're going to give him two more. He's getting a plus seven at the Sean Gaddy Award. I'm probably going to put that into his speed, it looks like. Although, what's his trucking? 70. Maybe I'll bump it into his trucking. Our left tackle is a 70 overall. Left guard is a 68. Look at that, our centers. We got two of them over a 70. But Bush went all the way. He dropped like five points or something if I moved him to the other position. So, it's not like we just throw him in at guard. Right guard, we got a plus five on Bates. And right tackle, we got two guys over a 70 overall. So, much improved on that offensive line. Don't really care about the training results for the right end or left end. D-tackle, yeah, so we got a 63 overall, and he's going to be third string for us. Huff up to an 80. Peterson a 79, so him and the Juco are the exact same. Right outside linebacker a 72. So that's a 12-point jump from what we started last year. Walker up to an 83. 77. Ooh, even Alston's up to a 77. And he's not going to be receiving for us anymore. Yeah, Thomas is better than Hawk was by one point. 
And he's pretty fast. 89 speed, 91 Excel. All right. Fry with that 90 speed, 91 Excel, though. And our kicker is up to an 83 overall, so hopefully he can make a 49-yarder now. Punter got a plus six. We. Oh, now I remember what I was supposed to say for you guys. So, custom conferences and the relegation and all that. Luckily, I went and took screenshots of all the standings, so you'll be able to see it that way. I'll put it up on the screen here for you. And I've got written down in a spreadsheet, because I'm a nerd. Now, as far as the ACC, the two teams relegated. Boston College went 3-9. and nine. Wake Forest, 0-12. You, you don't even have to worry about the, the conference record for Wake Forest. They didn't win a single game. Boston College finished one back of Maryland. They're both out. Neither one of them was protected. They actually finished genuinely at the bottom. This is the only conference that's completely clean. And replacing them, Boston College swapped with UConn. And Wake Forest, they'll be replaced with East Carolina. So this is what it's going to look like. UConn actually finished number 10 in the country. The upside for us, we're a better team. And we just knocked out two of the harder teams in our conference. So I will gladly play Wake Forest over UConn. Now, as far as the Big 12 conference, in the Lone Star Division, you had Houston finish at 5-7 and seven with a 3-6 record in conference, and UTEP finished 1-11, 0-9 in conference. They were both protected because they had just moved over. So third to last is actually Baylor with a 3-6 and six record. Uh, they finished tied with Texas Tech. Texas Tech had actually a worse overall record, but according to the game, which factors into tiebreakers and everything, Baylor finished behind Texas Tech, so Baylor moves. I'm assuming they lost to Texas Tech. And swapping with them is going to be SMU. Out of the Red River, no protections are worried about. Iowa State finished 1-11, 0-9 in conference. So they're gone, and they're going to be replaced with Tulsa. Big Ten's where it gets a little sketchy, and it's also making me change one thing that I thought I was going to do. So first, let's take care of the Legends division, because that was clean. Minnesota finished in dead last place with a 4-8 record, tied with Missouri, but they only went 1-8 in the conference, easily the worst conference record. Even Ball State went 3-6. and six. So Minnesota's out, and they are going to be swapped with Bowling Green. Now, the leaders division is where it gets a little sketchy, and it's also why I'm not going to rearrange things. Bowling Green is in Ohio. I should easily swap them over to the leaders division, because that's where everyone else in Ohio is. But then we're going to have three protected teams in the leaders, only one in Legends, and you're going to see in a second what happened here. So in last place in the leaders division, Miami of Ohio went 1-11, 1-8 in conference. Western Kentucky also won at 11, won at 8 in conference. So I'm assuming oh, that uh, Miami, Ohio lost to Western Kentucky. Third to last place, Toledo went 3-9, and 2-7. and seven. They're protected, they get to stay. So finally, fourth to last, right in the middle, Michigan went 6-7, and 4-5. and five. So Michigan is getting relegated because of all the protections underneath them. They're going to get swapped out with Ohio. Now, what I could do here is put Michigan State, swap them with Bowling Green, but again, I don't want the imbalance because that's pretty ridiculous. But wait until you see the SEC. In the Pac-12 in the Pacific, you had Hawaii and Fresno State both finish in the bottom two spots, but again, both protected. Third to last, Stanford 5-7, and 4-5 and five in conference. They were close to the same as Fresno State, so it's not too ridiculous, but Stanford is going to be relegated, and they're going to be swapping spots with Nevada. And the one throwing me off here, in the Pac-12 Mountain, you had Colorado State finishing dead last. They were protected. They were 3-9 with a 1-8 record. Second to last is going to be Oregon State with a 5-7 record, 3-6 in conference. So they're out. And coming in will be Air Force. And now for the SEC. Let's start with the easy one. In the Bayou, Arkansas finished dead last. 4-8, 3-6 in conference. Louisiana. The new team in there actually went 8-5 and 5-4 and and in the conference. They finished in third place. That's not bad. So Arkansas is gone. They're going to be replaced with Louisiana Tech. And now, and just look at this screen real quick. Before I put the standings up, look at the Glades. Look at that division. You ready for this one? In dead last place was Florida Atlantic. 3-9, and 1-8 and in conference. Protected. In second to last, FIU. 4-8, and 2-7. and seven. Protected. Third to last... UCF, 3-9, and 3-6 and in conference, protected. Fourth to last, Florida, 7-6, and 5-4 and in conference, but they won the conference last year, so they are also protected. So the team that finished in fourth place in the Glades division with a 10-3 and record and a 6-3 and record overall, and as you see on the screen, ranked number 13 
That is the U, Miami, relegated to the Sun Belt. I'm not guaranteeing that Miami finishes in the top five this year, but if you want the easy road to a national championship, they're number 13 right now. I'm guessing they're going to be ranked in the top 25. Just look at this damn conference. They got Arkansas, yes, but Georgia State, South Alabama, Southern Miss, Troy, Tulane, UAB, and UL Monroe. I'm going to take a wild guess and say I know the two teams that are getting promoted from this conference. But again, that was just a year one hiccup because of all the teams I brought in because of the way I chose to do it. If you wanted to do this yourself and you didn't want those protections initially, you were just going to go by the standings, bring them in, and just start from there, then you wouldn't have had this issue. But I'm going with the protections. It's only the year one. You'll never see that happen again. And from now on, so next year, let's say that Michigan doesn't get promoted for whatever reason. And I want to put it... Uh, Bowling Green back in the other division with all the other Ohio teams. I can do that next year because they're not protected. But if you have a protection, you're not going to get moved. The other thing I need to change real quick is apparently the Big 12, their automatic qualifier is for the Sugar Bowl now and not the Fiesta Bowl. I don't even know if the Fiesta Bowl is a thing anymore. All right, so the preseason, I'm going to take care of the recruiting board off camera. I will give you guys a full rundown next episode because we got a lot more we got to pack into this episode. We still got a game I got to do it too. Red shirts, I've already sort of told you what my plans are. The only thing I might redshirt that uh, uh, Johnson, the Juco transfer over who I put at halfback, because he's not even going to be returning kicks this year, so I might just redshirt him, give him one more year. We're going to take a look at the custom schedules here. Let's regenerate it real quick. Again, this year, we're not going to win a national championship again. Mostly because our strength of schedule is terrible. But also, I'm, I'm just looking to go, like... I don't know, six and three, seven and two in the division, right? Like I know it's a big jump up from last year, but I really don't care. I, like I said, oh and four outside. Well, okay, one and three. I don't want to lose the FCS again. But if we go one and four, that that's cool. You know, I am more focused on what we're gonna do within the conference this year. But hopefully, we're still playing at the end of the year. Let's have some fun with Oregon. All right, I'm gonna take care of all the rest of the crap off camera, and next time you hear from me, we're gonna be playing FCS. Okay, so jumping into FCS, I feel like it was a mistake to put this at the end of the episode. After I'm done editing it, I will decide whether or not this will ever happen again in the offseason. So, FCS, look at how much better we are. We're 75s all across the board, much improved. And you know what? I'm gonna get cocky. We're wearing all black, because I feel like this is a funeral. Ah, uh, it just dawned on me. I didn't put it back down to five minute quarters. I knew I would forget to do that. Come on, Henry, let's see if you can run this one back. Blocks held. Oh. Now nah, 21 caught up at the last second. 67 yarder. Way to open up the season, bud. Obviously, this is more his last season. If he happens to go down with an injury, we're pulling the red shirt off a of Royal. I'm not messing around. But I mean, if he's an extended injury, if it's just like a one weaker, we're fine. Barnes with the first catch. Oh, man, that pancake. More in for a rushing touchdown. Oh, this is not the same UMass team you played last year. Oh, please, defense, if we can hold them, we can chew some clock for, like, the rest of the game. I'm also not playing extra points anymore, unless it's, like, a real clutch situation. Just to give that little bit extra randomness in here. Oh, the defense is still trash. Oh, almost picked. Good deflection, Walker. <laughs> what was that? What was that? That's one way to get a tackle, Walker. Uh, it's a new one. Come on, Thornton. Fourth and one. All right, let's go. Nope, never mind. Shut down that option play. Good stop defense. Good job, Skinner. Oh, that pull was so much better this time. Frazier bouncing it to the outside. Can't get that one block from 61, but that's all right. 27 yards on the first rushing attempt. Oh, this team is so much better. Nice read option. Good blocks. Oh, breaks a tackle. Come on, get that up. Oh, right to the one. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. I like our chances now. I wasn't sure if we'd ever win a natty with this team. If I can put together at least one good recruiting class, we got this. Bounce to the outside. Frazier in with a rushing touchdown. All right, so I'm going to sim this defensive possession. Let's see what happens. Shut him down. 
All right, let's. I'm gonna try and pass the ball a little bit here. Oh, wide open for Bar. Oh, I put it in the wrong spot. Wade's first career catch only goes for seven yards, but hasn't dropped a pass yet in his career. That's how I look at it. Beautiful. Oh, the offensive line held long enough. Frazier was wide open. And Montgomery in the corner of the end zone. Yeah, all right, we'll, we'll super sim a little bit here. I might even skip the entire second quarter, honestly. All right, so I just sim the second quarter. We're up 37 nothing. We're just going to sim this game out. All right, apparently we just sort of stopped at the end of the game. More so with a crap ton of passing yards, though, considering that was all just on sim. 257 yards, oh, 43 yards on the ground, three total touchdowns. Now, unfortunately, they got a couple scores at the end there, so we only won 40 to 10, but that was still a 30 point beatdown. They're not all going to be this short, but if a game starts getting away from us one way or the other, then that's what we're going to do. Like I said, we're going to push for some double headers, and I'm going to remember to put it on five minute quarters. Final stats more goes 20 to 34, 257 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, only took one sack. Rushing Frazier with 117 yards and a touchdown. By the way, he would already be a third of the way to the leading rusher from last season. Robinson had 303 yards, so in one game he already did all that. Four broken tackles, too. Moore with 43 yards on the ground and a touchdown. Montgomery, four catches, 46 yards and a touchdown. Frazier, four for 50. Wade in his first game, four for 49. Blocking. Look at all those pancakes the computer got versus what I get. No wonder we're never going to win an offensive lineman award. Defense, Freeman led the day with eight tackles. Freeman with four TFLs. The line got in the backfield while we were simming. Freeman with two sacks. Smith with one, so freshman really stepping up. No picks. Thornton with two pass deflections. King with one. Alston, Walker, and Lowell with one. Sims, two for two on field goal attempts. All right, so that'll wrap up this episode. Extra long one, but like I said, I'm trying to get through this series a little more rapid fire. Not take our time as much as we would with a traditional dynasty because I want to go through and rebuild. Like, by the time the series is over, if I haven't rebuilt at least, like, five schools, then I'm going to feel like a failure. Like, I want UMass to be a powerhouse, and I want another one. You know, I, like, I want, like, one in each of these conferences at least. I mean, I'll go forever. I don't care. We can go 450 episodes on this series. I can just go for 10 years. I don't really care. But I want to get through as quickly as possible. So this episode might have been pretty long. We're going to get the length under control as soon as I get used to this kind of format. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please be sure to hit like down below. If you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell to get it delivered directly in your inbox every single time I upload. Do you like the double headers? Do you want to see more of them? Do you want to see me just simulate some games? Like sort of take a guess on whether or not we can win or lose? Any suggestions, leave that down in the comment section below. I will respond to everything unless you're the trolliest of trolls. Can't believe I screwed that one up after all this time. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Shane. I'm out.